All right, so I got a new knife. Wanted to make a little video about. I haven't done, I haven't done uh, gear reviews in a long time because there's just so many gear reviewers out there. But uh, there's very few videos on this particular knife, and I have a lot to say about it. So uh, this is the GCS. This is a bo uh, a Bowie with a leather stacked handle. GCS custom knives. Custom. Uh, you can't order, hey, I want this knife, these handles, this uh, thing, you know, this shape, whatever. It's not custom. It's not even mid-tech in the sense of I want, you know, that you could even pick out of their options. It's, I mean, it's kind of, I don't know why they say customs. Maybe that's their goal. So uh, here we go. I'm going to give you a good close look at the knife and I'm going to talk about the design features first. You have a Bowie style blade, not unlike the SOG style military knives, right? Uh, we have a good, thick, double quillion guard there, double sided guard there. Leather stacks on the handles. And the tang, I'll give you a good look at this, goes all the way to the end. I'm not entirely certain if it's peened or threaded. There's a little gap right there. I wonder if it's threaded. I don't know. Uh, but it feels pretty solid. And the tang does go all the way through. So if I went with uh, the things I like about it, I like the size, I like the heft, and uh, more importantly, the handle. Let's talk about the handle. The uh, I was looking for a leather stacked handle because the first knife I ever had was this here Western knife. This is almost a hundred year old knife and look at that handle. I dropped a hatchet. Here's the advantage of the leather stacked handles. I dropped a hatchet on that when I was a kid and I was worried that it, it was going to be messed up forever. That day we went fishing and then I got the fish goop and stuff all over the knife and uh, it absorbed the oil the leather absorbed the oil and kind of sealed that that cut so you can't even tell I don't even remember where it was and there's probably been countless others just like it and I couldn't even tell you I mean it, I, I, it's probably been 20 years but you know that's one of the big advantages of this but so out of the main knife companies that make really good knives. Uh, K-Bar has a leather stacked handle and SOG has a leather stacked handle. SOG's is, uh, or SOG, theirs is impregnated with plastic. And even if it's just coated in plastic, it peels off and then that sucks, but it's impregnated with it, it's stabilized with it, which means it's gonna forever feel like plastic. It's never gonna feel or act like leather. The advantage to this is because then it won't mildew or rot. But if you're taking care of your blade anyways, it shouldn't do that. It's in fact superior to stick with the natural material. And uh, K-Bar doesn't do that. Now K-Bar also had their, has their normal USMC, but I wasn't looking for that kind of knife. I was looking, uh, I already have that. I was looking for, I wasn't looking for a black coated blade. I wasn't looking for the fuller. I was looking for something that looks a lot more like this. And uh, the one that they have that's close to that is made out of a, a steel that I really don't like in a large knife, and that's 4116 Krupp. And uh, so when, so uh, that brings, that brought me to, to, to GCS. This is $80, and they simply oil-treated their leather. This is great. That's, an ama that's a very good, very good thing. Uh, I also was worried that it was all just going to be like a perfect circle like that, the whole way up. No. It has a pretty nice taper to it. I thought I was going to have to modify it, which is another advantage of leather stacked handles, is you can, you can uh, very easily, with a... With a file contour it to your hand a lot easier than with wood or with a full tank but no actually has a very nice taper and it flattens out towards the top here so you can index fairly well um, I'm very impressed with the handle of this uh, knife 
So let's uh, stick with the pros, and I'll say that this is D2 tool steel. It used to be a German steel, but I'm hearing that some it's starting to be made in Japan. So I don't know. I don't really care where it's made. I care how it is. Uh, you got a hollow grind, give you a really good close look. Good hollow grind, but it's not too hollow. It's just a little bit of a hollow grind. There's almost a little bit of a hollow grind in what would typically be flat. It seems like they hollowed that out. So even though it doesn't look like it has a fuller, it kind of behaves like it has a fuller. So it has a little lighter uh, blade there. Uh, so that's that for the materials for that. Let's look at the sheath. I wanted to give you a good close look at this because I was very curious. Scout carry works best on the left hand if you want scout carry. And uh, I dabble around with scout carry, which is where it's at the small of your back. I dabble with it, but I don't like it because you can't roll around. I'm also a martial artist. I do a lot of, uh, and lately the main focus is uh, jujitsu. And I'm huge into jujitsu and. I, if I were to be rolling around having to struggle and fight with somebody and this is digging this is in your back, I actually like it better for carrying up in the front but horizontally. And these are perfect for that if you're right-handed. Uh, they go, I can stick my belt buckle, it's a cowboy style belt buckle, you can stick that right in the middle there and unbutton these. Give you a good close look at this. This does swivel, so if you want to spin it around for whatever reason, sometimes these things get in the way of whatever you're doing, so you can spin it around. This is a bison hide sheath. This sheath is spectacular. $80 what could be spent on this sheath, no problem. Uh, the only thing that I would do to change it, I would make it ambidextrous, so that way uh, when you do the scout carry, you could easily just flip it over, and then the only thing you'd have to mess with is this finger break. And then uh, I would make this more rigid, because it's such good leather, it's not very... It's, it's very soft. And that's undesirable for a thumb break. I will probably take this button out, rebutton it myself, and put a piece of thicker rawhide inside there and sew it in. And then that will be a better thumb break. But this, right now, it's actually fairly inadequate as a thumb break. You have to grab it. So that slows down getting it out. So if I were talking to GCS, I would suggest to them. Uh, to go ahead and do that and try to make it ambi sheath and all you would need to do is not have this cut out really that's the only thing i can think of you could i i, I tried to turn it around and it almost goes all the way in so i don't know maybe make that rounded out or something and uh that's what i that's the main change i would make or have this somehow completely removable maybe you can find a way to make these completely removable and then put it on the other side so maybe another snap in the middle here, that's an option. But other than that, these things, this, this is a nice sheath. So as a martial artist though, the one real big problem I have is a big problem. This blade is not straight at all. I can probably straighten this out myself, but that is, there are other quality control issues here, like the tang not quite being the fit and finish that I'd want, and I am very, very tolerant of those things, so I don't really mind. That being said, if you could, if, you, if I were owning a company, I would try to button that down and not have that get through quality control, but um, that's also not a big deal to me because it doesn't really affect how I use the knife and I'm not that snooty about my knives that I need the fit and finish to be that perfect. But if you're calling yourself a custom, you can see where the grinder, you can actually see where the grinder, um, you can see the lines from the grind and where they went down onto here and uh, they never really polished that up. I would polish that up for sure. But really, this is the big problem. This is, that is an issue. If you, I could set this on a table and the tip would be resting before the guard. 
And that's a big issue for indexing. If you're, I, I, I have a lot of training in Kali and Eskrima, and uh, that would be a big issue. I can probably straighten out myself, so it's not a big deal. I am impressed with this knife for $80. Currently, I haven't used it for anything, so I don't know. It's reasonably sharp. I just wanted to give you guys a good close look at it. There's not a lot of videos out there for this, for this knife. And... Uh, it is very nice for the dollar amount, especially with the materials included. And they did oil it, so there were some people on Amazon that were saying that they got it kind of rusty, which makes sense because it's D2, and they said, oh, it's a stainless steel. Well, D2 is kind of stainless. It's not... That's my favorite part about it, is it's not that much of a stainless steel. I'm not a fan of stainless steels, except for OS 8 or D2, or something similar to, to those that are corrosion resistant, but still pretty strong. I think this stitching could be a little bit tighter. Just now noticed that. But nonetheless, I can do stitching. I work with leather. That's not a big deal to me, but uh, maybe that could be a little tighter. Other than that, really, this is a good, it's a great sheath. I'll spend 80 bucks on this sheath. If if it had all the details that I wanted, which it's not 100% there, like I said, the thumb break and stuff, but if you dropped 100 bucks on this sheath and it was everything you wanted at a custom place and, and you sent them the exact specs to this sheath and you got it like this and you dropped 100 bucks, that'd be, you'd be satisfied. So I don't see an issue. Uh, with the sheath and the knife it looks like it's going to be really good and i'm looking forward to using this thing um i will probably follow up but uh the only changes i would make right now if i were if i were gcs i would try to button down that the little bit but then definitely definitely straight make sure your blades are straight coming out of the manufacturer or the out of the uh, factory or before they ship definitely make sure they're straight that's a problem. I can overlook. I can overlook that type of stuff. I don't really care. It's gonna patina eventually. I'm gonna have this thing for years. It's not a big deal. But that <laughs> it needs to be straight. For if if you're talking about a fighting knife and GCS sells British commando style daggers, the type of knives that are similar to this blade shape that I actually really want to get that were similar to the dive knives my grandpa used and stuff like that. Uh, my grandpa was the predecessor to the Navy SEAL, so he, he, he had those knives, and I want one like it, but new, and I might get one, but if I get a fighting knife, one that's a dagger or something like that, and that isn't indexing right, that would actually bother me. I don't mind it so much on a camp knife. But when you look at something, this is, even this is basically designed as a fighting knife. So yeah, long story short, I feel like this is designed as a fighting knife. Uh, it's just, and it's, and it's good, but I'm saying I, I do feel like this is designed as a fighting knife. You know, you got this guard here. It's not just a guard. That is not just there to keep your hand from going up on the blade. That is to parry and, and, and to protect your knuckles. And it goes over the knuckles fairly nicely for the size. So uh, I, I think that if you're making one with a fighting background or a fighting you know, design, I think that that blade should index properly. And I think there's a little bit of a twist to it, too. Yep, there's definitely a little bit of a twist in that, but... It is fairly out of line. I will try to fix it, but that's something I would suggest to GCS knives to make sure that that doesn't make it through their thing. Another reason why I brought this knife, this old knife, is is uh, I might not bother with sending it in because this one is like that, only not out of the manufacturer, but because it's a 100-year-old knife and life has been unkind to it. So I don't mind. I'll use it, but... It will still do the job. Yeah, that's my that's my two cents on this knife so far. I'll let you know if it breaks down. If I, uh, you know, you see this video and it's a few years old and it hasn't broken down, then it's probably performed well. I, I don't tend to, I don't tend to do excessive videos on one knife. So, have a good day, everybody.